People are not stock market commodities. An important thing to remember. We're going to start out today reading my little mini Bible here. 2 Peter chapter 2 and beginning in verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise. Turn the page here. Of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Uh, there's a special place in hell for people who have no conscience at all when it comes to making money. And they'll look at other people and they want to steal from them. See, there's different types of thieves in this world. There are thieves that come with the black face mask on, the black hoodie, whatever, and they, they come in and they break and they steal and whatever. And there are those types of thieves. But then you have thieves that wear $2,000 suits and work on Wall Street, and work in the banks. A lot of different types of thieves out there. And um, it kind of depends on the uh, type of thief uh, when it comes to the danger that they, am, that they uh, are to other people, to innocent people. But uh, there's a lot of people that have been made into securities. Um, if you're aware of that, there's commercial mortgage-backed securities. There are, is uh, mortgage-backed securities. There are student loan. Um, I forget what the, the thing is, uh, but there's a student loan uh, something and back security. Uh, slabs, I think they call them. I can't think of what the A stands for. If you know, put it in the comments down below. But, uh, you know, you have an auto loan. You are signing your name to a contract. And what they're doing is they're basically making you pay on average about three times the original purchase price with interest payments. So yes, you might have things, so to speak, but it, you're overpaying for everything. And what occurs is you have people that are, they just continue to overpay. And, um, and throughout life, you're just constantly working, trying to keep up with those uh, debts that you have that you're overpaying for and um, now what the financial uh, thieves want to do within the banking sector particularly the Federal Reserve here in America whatever other central banks are around the world what they want to do is they want to switch people to a digital currency and then uh, control your spending uh, based on your you know political leanings too or whatever else you know if you are a born-again Christian and you have somebody that doesn't like born-again Christians well they can just kind of shut off your money central bank digital currencies if you don't understand that I think most people do that watch this channel but if you don't understand it you need to look into it because it's very serious it's extremely serious um, use cash as much as you can it's a great way to rebel against the central bank digital currencies um, we have to get away from this thing of just paying with you know, for everything with digital money. Bad idea. You become a slave that way. So, but the point I need to make here with this is a stock market commodity is something that has no emotions. It has no feelings. I bought stock in uh, Lockheed Martin, we'll say. Well, the airplanes aren't going to be happy or sad about you buying stock. They don't care. Uh, whatever other technologies are there at Lockheed Martin. Um, you know, buy stock in whatever you can, you know, out there if you're, I'm not telling people to do that. I'm just saying if you do it, uh, the, the things that you're buying stock into don't have emotions or feelings, but people do. And so here's the point, because I need to remind these sick bankers about this. And this can get back through the pipeline and whatever else, because I'm a preacher. And if they don't hear it from me, they'll hear it from somebody else that repeats it because the Holy Spirit bears witness to what I say when I'm in line with the Scriptures. Always remember that. I have to be in line with the Scriptures for the Holy Spirit to bear witness of what I'm saying. But the point is, the bankers just think that they can come in and they can force people to do things. That they can just say, well, you will submit, you will be forced into this, and we don't really care about your feelings on it. Um, we're going to push people to the breaking point and that's just the way it is that's just the way that it works because we need to get our our uh, digital currencies in 
so we can track and trace everything that these people do. We can get complete control over them. Uh, well, people have emotions, people have feelings. You can't just go and take over people and say, you know, boss them around when it comes to their money. You can't do that. Um, you know, and uh, a good way to prove this about people having emotions is what happened uh, during the pandemic. Um, people, you know, forgot that there are those out there that have emotions. And a lot of people were forced into situations where they couldn't be with their loved ones when their loved ones were dying. Um, they couldn't go and they, they couldn't leave the house and they couldn't cheer up and whatever else. And I mean, look up the definition of um, domestic abuse and compare it to what happened. Did a whole video on it, can't be on YouTube because that would be illegal. You can't speak freely about the situation. But I mean, look into the uh, high levels of mental illness that were created. Um, people doing things that just didn't even make any sense because they were being told to fear. Fear everything. Uh, you can't be around other people anymore. Other people are scary. You have to keep them six feet apart. You have to do all kinds of other things. And, um, I mean, that's what they did. I'm just stating facts. You're not going to say, well, we have to fact check what you're doing. No, you can see what happened. And uh, people were living in fear for all that time. Um, it's a shame that people were uh, taught to fear like that and fear normal interaction with others. Uh, it's a terrible thing. And uh, what did it lead to? Oh, I don't know. Increase in crime. Look at how much crime has gone up. I mean, when did you hear about stores being shut down before the pandemic due to crime and, and theft? When did you hear about that? I didn't hear of it very often. There might have been some, but I don't know of any. Now, happens all the time. A lot of employees are being laid off and whatever else. A lot of big stores are having very hard hits on them because of the huge amount of retail theft. That's terrible. But why? What happened? People were treated as if they were stock market commodities. How did that work out? Not very good. And of course, now we have the thing of destruction through debt. A lot of people are just dying in, in credit card debt and home mortgages and everything else, auto loans and whatever. I mean, people are just drowning in debt. The, the statistics and everything that they come out with are just shocking. Absolutely shocking the amount of money that people owe. Over a trillion dollars of credit card debt here in America. Um, admitted numbers. I, uh, you know, it blows my mind. It boggles my mind. Uh, average income in America is something around thirty to forty per, thirty to forty thousand dollars, and yet the median home price is over four hundred thousand. That's not very good. That's not good at all. But uh, you know, hey, we can just keep on pushing these people, treat them like slaves. No, you can't. I'll give you another good one. How about the electric vehicle situation? We're going to force everybody to have an electric vehicle by, you know, different years and different things, but ultimately by 2030, the infamous year. Um, that you hear so much about a Agenda 2030 and whatever else, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. That's what the they want. They want to come out and say everybody has to be driving an electric vehicle. Yeah, but uh, the problem is a lot of people are are fighting against that system. Um, you can't force it on people. That's the whole thing. People will resist and they have to get a hold of that thing in their minds. You can't say you are required to have a hundred, $120,000 Tesla car in a number, you know, in a few years. And that thing, if it gets in an accident, it, uh, and catches on fire, you have a fire that you can't even put out. Um, <laughs> Uh, 4,000 degree fire, that's really good for the environment. I thought these things were supposed to be greener, you know, and whatever. You can put a car fire out. I have in the past. Um, just kind of a weird thing. But you see, again, you're a stock market commodity. You are a number. What's your social security number? What's your bank account number? What's your uh, 
license number, driver's license number, what's your employer identification number, what's your on and on and on. Um, you see, the again, you have to remember out there that the Antichrist system, it's not going to end well. Oh, we're so brilliant. We have all these World Economic Forum people and all the other people that are up there sitting there and global summits and, and the, the wisest minds out there. And yet they're coming up with some of the dumbest ideas. <laughs> Let's force people into compliance. It doesn't work. It will not work. Um, there's a statement I have in the back of my main Bible, a, a philosopher from centuries ago, and he said it's about it's an e easier thing to enslave people through state favors than tyranny. And he's right. I don't remember the exact quote, doesn't matter. But the whole point is, it's a true statement. If you're going to enslave people, you would do a lot better with state favors, doing nice things for them and saying, you know, we'll give you tax exemptions or whatever, or things like that. Um, if you submit, we'll give you tax breaks and nice things and whatever else. So, and of course, uh, the final one that I want to talk about here is the thing of no free speech. Um, we're going to wreck people. We're going to take away people's freedom to speak. Um, I'm sorry, sir, you're not able to speak on this platform anymore. You cannot uh, preach the Word of God freely. If, there, if you say certain things that we deem to be offensive or we deem to be uh, misinformation, disinformation, whatever else that they come up with, uh, politically incorrect, hate speech, yeah, all the things, uh, then we're going to shut you down and you will comply. All you're doing when you do that, YouTube people or other goonies out there, all that you're doing is forcing men like me to be more creative. To say, okay, you took my speech away here, I can go over to Rumble, or I can go and I can do offline videos, or I can write books, write tracks, whatever else. Um, you see, if you teach the truth, if you're speaking the truth, you don't have to censor other people. Um, you simply don't. And uh, the Goonies don't learn that lesson very well. They think that uh, they just need to shut down anybody that has a different opinion. So, um, you have to remember that uh, people are not stock market commodities. People are not robots. God did not create us that way. God created man to have a free will. Man has to have the ability to choose. Now, there are certain things that are unethical, certain things that are wicked and wrong and whatever else. You can't just say everybody gets the right to choose whatever they want to do. There has to be law and order. The rule of law has to be there. It has to be established. And you have to found that rule of law on the Bible, specifically the King James Bible for English-speaking people. Um, and then your nation will prosper because it is God's rule book for life. And, you know, it's not an offensive book. That's the thing. It just always blows my mind. You get atheists and whatever else, and they get so offended, you know, that the Bible, oh, the Bible. A, so you, you want people to steal, which, is, which would be contrary to the Ten Commandments? Let's get rid of the Ten Commandments. Why? Why? Uh, absolutely ridiculous. The Ten Commandments are a great role for, or a great uh, rule for life. Just basic rules. Um... So whatever, but uh, just wanted to do this little video here quick and just kind of put that out there and say um, to all the goons out there, be they in the banking or the or internet or whatever law enforcement type of goons that don't care about freedom, um, it's a really bad idea to take people and try to turn them into robots and try to take away their free will. I remember seeing this thing of this uh, governor of New Mexico, and she says, there's no such thing as absolute rights. There's no such thing. Um, your rights can be taken from you, and we can strip your freedoms from you and whatever as soon as we want to. Uh, that's not true. Um, you see, the founding fathers of this nation 
they understood that there are certain rights that are unalienable. They come from, we are endowed by our creator with those unalienable rights. You can't make laws against certain things. And you say, well, want to bet? I can make laws against it. You're not, miss, you're not getting it, okay? The reason that they are unalienable is because if you do put a lien on them, now you have out, you've stepped outside of the realm where God can protect you as a leader. Rulers are not supposed to be a terror to good, but to the evil. And when you step out of that position, God can no longer protect you in your position of power. Now you can get yourself in all kinds of trouble. And the people will find ways to revolt. And they will find ways to get away from you. And they won't listen to you. They'll make declarations of independence. They'll fight revolutionary wars. So you better just let people have freedom. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.